So in today's video, we'll be creating this satisfying abstract animation using only geometry nodes. Basically meaning we'll be turning a default cube into this animation, specifically this cool looking default cube. Uh, and we're just gonna leave it inside of our project for just this once. So let's get started working on our geometry node setup. Now let's just hit new and start working on our geometry node system. Well, like you saw in the animation, we need to do several things. First of all, we want to create this block array. So basically a, a line of blocks and they will need to rotate on the proximity of our UV sphere. We need to generate the actual ball, which is made up of two parts and we need a background plane. Let's create our block array. Let's do this by getting in a transform node and setting the Y scale of our default cube here to about 0.2. Actually, let's just add in a vector node here. Plug that into the scale, everything to one and just change the Y thickness here to 0.2. Now, why we do this, I'll show you later on. Next up, subdivide mesh. This will add in more geometry. So this is one subdivision, two, three, four. So that's a lot of geometry there, uh, but we're going to need it. So leave it at four. Then sub division surface this will make it nice and round which i'm gonna set to about three so now we have a nicely subdivided cube with nice round edges next shade smooth so not is shade smooth but set shade smooth plug it in between get everything nice and smooth and finally set material so we can actually use a material in here now while we're on the subject i'm just going to add in a few materials so this was the uh, default cube i'm just going to add in a new one which I'm going to call blocks, another one, which I'm going to call top, another one, which I'm going to call bottom and another one, which I'm going to call BG. So for the blocks, guess what? We'll be using the blocks material. How can we create this array of blocks to do that? We are going to need a mesh line node and I'm going to plug it into the group output so you can actually see it here. There it is. It's going up in the Z direction and it's going up by a count of 10. Now I'm going to change this to a Y direction instead of using the the offset version we are going to use the endpoints version and instead of count we'll be using resolution so now we have a line one meter in length on the y-axis with a resolution of one so basically giving us two points one here and one here now if we take a instance on points node plug it in between and instance our blocks here you will see we get two of these going on one point and on the other point i'm going to change the end location to be about 10 or so so it's nicely outside of our cameras view you and the start location to be about negative five now you will see there's a lot of gap in between all of these blocks and that's where this vector node comes in handy because this resolution needs to be about double the width of the vector on the y here so if i set this to 0.4 you'll see that this is working correctly however i want to change this dynamically that if i change the thickness here it will still work on the resolution there so to do that i'm going to take a separate xyz node because i only need the y i put the 0.2 there and i'm going to plug it into a math node set this one to multiply and multiply it times two so plug that into the resolution and now we should always be able to change the thickness of our blocks here and still get a resolution that fits the entire array leave it at 0.2 and we're good to go now we need to animate this y value here so this start point to actually create the illusion of the blocks moving to the left here before we do that however these blocks are about 100k faces each and and just to make the computer more responsive, I'm just going to disable both the subdivide mesh and the subdivision surface, uh, leaving us with these uh, ugly shaded blocks. Um, but they are now only six faces, so uh, way faster for your computer. Just make sure to re-enable those before you render everything out. So we have the start location. And to actually tweak that, I'm going to use a value here. And we can just plug it in here and see what happens. Okay, so that's all messed up. And that's because this is not a vector value, but a regular value and we are going to need a vector math node to actually fix this here we have the vector math set it to multiply and we can now take this and multiply it by negative five and it's the same as before but we now have this value to control it however if this is zero uh, you will see that this is no longer outside of our camera and that's something that we always want so instead of multiply i'm going to use multiply add and i'm going to multiply it by a value of negative one on the y and instead add a value of negative five so 
So even if this is zero, it will always be outside of our camera's view there. And we can just increase the value again to actually animate the blocks. Talking about animating, let's go ahead and do that. Open up a timeline window, select the value over here. And on the first frame, let's hit I over the value here. Now let's go to the last frame, change this to any value basically that you want. I'm going to use 25 and hit I again. So now we have the blocks moving and you will see it's slowly speeding up. And that's because we are still using the Bezier interpolation. So in the timeline here, let's hit T and choose the linear interpolation. And now we get a constant rate moving these blocks. I want some control over the speed, however, without having to manually change the keyframes. So I'm going to take a math node, plug that in between the value and the multiply add there and take this value over here and plug it into the group input. Now set it to multiply as well. And if we now hop on over to our modifier here, you will see we now get some control. So it's now uh, about two times slower than it was before. So this is the original speed. This is the speed I'm going to use, uh, but you could even make it faster or way slower if you want to, but it's all procedural. It all works dynamically. So I'm going to leave it at 0.5. This is the complete block array. So I'm going to name it accordingly, add in a frame. This will help you keep overview of what is what. And we're going to call this one block array. Next up, creating the EUV sphere. So there it is. Plug it in there. Set these segments to 128 and the rings to 64, giving us a nice amount of geometry to work with. Add another set shade smooth node. Plug it in there. Done. You've created your UV sphere. It's easy like that. But no, for real, we need two separate halves to create two different materials and also create a nice gap in between, making the ball look more visually appealing. And to do that, we are going to use a mesh boolean. So add in the mesh boolean node, plug it in between the set shade mode and the UV sphere. Leave it on difference and let's add in a cube here on the mesh two. And now nothing's happening. And that's because our cube is too small. So I'm going to change the X and Y size to two. And it's now actually removing part of our UV sphere. However, it's not a perfect half. And that's because we need to transform it, add in a transform node and move this thing down until we get half a circle, negative 0.5, because our UV sphere is one meter in diameter. No, no, no. <laughs> so you should get half a circle now. For the other half of our uh, ball here, just take a joint geometry node and another transform. Take the mesh boolean output, put that into the transform there and plug this into the joint geometry node. Now, if I move this up or down, you will see we get two halves of the same UV sphere. Easily enough, I can just rotate it on the Y about 180 degrees and we will get exactly a flipped or mirrored, if you will mesh boolean there and we now have two halves of one ball with a nice division uh, in between and uh, final step though we want to add in two set material nodes for each half so one on this line and another one on this line so we can use the right halves there and i'm going to name this one top and this one bottom doesn't really matter just make sure you use different materials for each half so this is our ball now let's add a frame to this as well i'm going to call this one ball very original and let's combine the ball and the block array join geometry node there you go our ball is invisible and that's because it's uh, in our block array here easy fix of course another transform node and just pull this guy up to a value of two which is the size of our default cube there so two will put it right on top of it but i feel like our ball is too big so let's fix that i'm gonna set the skill here to 0.8 and set the z translation to 1.8 to compensate for the smaller skill of our ball here balls in place camera is not looking too hot though so let's just select our camera here hit g z pull it up and g z z pull it in i think this is fine we can now close off our timeline window and let's reselect our geometry node system next up add in a grid and take that into the joint geometry node add another transform let's set the size to a bigger number so something like 50 or so so this is now a plane functioning as the background of our animation now i'm going to move this down so it's below the rest of it about negative five and we just need a bit more size here to compensate for that fact so 75 or so will do so now we have a nice plane underneath the entire thing let's just add another set material node to this one as well and let's give it the background material and we're good to go add another frame 
So let's name this Patreon. That's where you can find this project file as well as all the other project files I've made so far, several materials and also some other cool stuff I've made available to all of you if you join the Patreon. So go ahead and you'll also get Discord access to join the Discord server where we can talk about Blender together. Next up, we want to rotate the ball. To rotate the ball is actually very, very simple. We actually already have a value which we can use to do that. So if we take this value over here and we plug it into the rotation of our ball and we play it back, you will see our ball is rotating. However, it's doing so in a very strange manner. And that's because the value is a float value and it's affecting all three of our axes. So as always, to fix that, combine X, Y, Z. Now it's only on the X axis and there you go the ball's rolling in the right direction however it's moving in the opposite direction so it's rotating to the left instead of to the right easy fix though just adding in a math node setting it to multiply and multiplying it by a value of negative one will move it in the opposite direction thus fixing this error however um if we now change the speed set it to one you will see the ball is not changing in speed so we want to change that by using this value over here from the multiply node and plugging that in there and instead multiplying that by negative one. So now if we change this value, you will see both of these are actually changing. Final step, the actual blocks changing. And to do that, we need to rotate all of these instances. And conveniently, there's a node for that called rotate instances. I'm just going to plug that in between. And now if we rotate this, you will see something is happening to actually get a result which doesn't change every instance uh, combined but does stuff individually we will use a geometry proximity node so there it is and we'll use the position data plug that into the rotation there so for the target of our geometry proximity node we will use the ball that we created so this joint geometry node contains both halves and we'll use that as the target now as you can tell it is doing something but it's not looking too good just yet and that's because first of all we need to add another combine xyz node again and make sure we're only using the y rotation because that's the only rotation that we want then we need to add in a transform node to actually create a bigger ball here so now effectively what it's doing is it generated a ball here same size as this one um one meters actually and what it's doing is it's using that as a target proximity for the faces of the ball and it's changing the rotation on the y-axis depending on the closeness of that so if i change the y translation you will see something's happening here it's actually moving the ball in a direction either this way or this way that's all good but i actually want to affect more of these blocks and to do that we need more skill or actually we need to increase the ball and i want to increase it on the y direction basically making a elliptical uh, sphere and if we just change this y you will see something is happening now i'm going to change this to about six or so and and we get a nice distortion going along here as i said before we can actually manipulate where it is by doing this and that's actually something that i want so i'm gonna go into the camera view again and i'm gonna change the y location until the blocks sort of stop rotating right after the ball here so i think six and a half or so will work so that's looking fine however um it twisted the entire thing as well and we could rotate it on the y here but that doesn't do anything because that's rotating our actual geometry proximity here so instead let's add another transform node in the end here and let's rotate this thing on the y until it lines up the block there with about this line visually and there you go so now these blocks are all flat so the ball can actually roll on it and these are rotating towards it always lining up nicely in here so if i play this back you will see it's just adding in new blocks here and they always get to this point before the ball is actually at their position pretty cool pretty neat and final step let's just add in these two again and now it's looking like it's supposed to final step let's work on some basic materials so let's hop on over to shading material preview and i will just add in a few materials to show you what i did so top material very simple just black roughness default bottom material slightly slightly light gray metallic all the way to one roughness 0.35 or so blocks same stuff metallic all the way to one roughness 0.25 even make them nice and reflective base color a very blush pinkish color sort of salmon color if you will background very 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 light blush pinkish color as well environment over here so instead of color i've been using a environment texture uh, open it up i've been using 
using this one, which is from Polyhaven. I'll put a link in the description. Just put it in there. Uh, setting the strength to 0.15, making it darker, removing this original light from the scene and just adding in two area lights or so. Pulling this guy up, moving it to the side there, just shining on the ball like so. Increasing the strength to 50 maybe maybe even 500 making the color slightly yellow as well duplicate the lamp and just rotate the direction maybe pull it up and there you go that's the um complete render setup i'm just go back into layout here just disable the overview so there you go that's the entire scene all done uh, and you can render out the animation as always um, make sure to use 30 fps or so uh, output obviously ffmpeg video or a png sequence if you will encoding matryoshka instead mp4 quality perceptually lossless and you're good to go and we've got the finished result now i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you learned something if you did then please leave a like subscribe or comment down below also i want to point out that the files for this project are available on my patreon page so consider becoming a patron to get access to this and all other tutorials i've done before thank you for watching and see you in the next one